Perception impacts promotion. That's the bottom line. The reason we have a leadership, I should say a global leadership gender gap, has nothing to do with women's skills, competencies, or knowledge. It has everything to do with our perceptions of women as leaders, as workers, as mothers, and as wives. It comes down to perception. And for many women, perception is reality. And it impacts promotion. Let's see a show of hands. How many of you think men are more emotionally intelligent than women? It's OK. Be honest. <laughs> be candid. All right, let's see a show of hands. How many of you think, sorry, how many of you think men are more emotionally intelligent than women? Not one person in the room. <laughs> Not even the men? <laughs> OK. Now, I bet some of the men are uh, scared because this is a, a male female dominated audience. But it's OK. It's OK. Not what, does anyone think men are more emotionally intelligent? No. OK. I have never had an audience where there wasn't one person, at least, <laughs> who thought that. OK. So how many of you think women are more emotionally intelligent than men? Let's see a show of hands. Okay, 100% of the room, you're all wrong. <laughs> and millions of people who's taken emotional intelligence assessments worldwide, men and women are actually equally emotionally intelligent overall. However, you knew there's a however coming, right? However, we do have different emotional intelligence strengths that are considered gender specific. So let's take a look at those. In general, women tend to score higher than men in areas of empathy, social responsibility. You can think of that also as corporate social responsibility and interpersonal relationships. So on average, men tend to score higher than women in areas of assertiveness, stress tolerance, and self-regard. What's another name for self-regard? Yes, confidence. Men score higher in confidence than women do. Now, caveat, not all, not all of us fall into gender-specific patterns. There are many women who are stronger in the male-specific attributes, and there are many men who are stronger in those female-specific EQ attributes. So, but when you look at overall trends globally, this is how it falls out from a gender-specific pattern. So I was really interested in this because I wanted to know how these EQ differences played into the perception and promotion of women. So I'll start with this image here. Can you all see that? <laughs> People in the sides over there on each side. <laughs> so what I've done is I, in my research and in the book, I actually took all, I looked at all the barriers. And there's a lot of them. There's different types of barriers, but I put them into categories. So this is one category of barriers, gender bias and gender stereotypes. And I'll explain agentic leader behaviors and role congruity in a minute. OK, let's take a look at these stereotypes for a minute. Let's start with the female brain. We have a large region for chocolate. <laughs> we have a pretty big shopping lobe. We have an area for musicals and sitcoms, fantasy, and maternal urges and weddings. <laughs> let's look at the male brain. You have one big area that stands out in the male brain. Surra surrounding that, you have a lame excuses gland, a beer lobe, job stuff, ball sports, and one commitment neuron. <laughs> so I show you this. The problem with stereotypes, it's not that they're inaccurate. A lot of these things are true, right? I could relate to the chocolate one. I absolutely agree with that. Shopping, not so much, but chocolate, absolutely. But the thing with stereotypes is that it doesn't account for individual differences and nuances. It's not all women like musicals and sitcoms. Not all men play sports or are interested in sports. So it's not that they're untrue, but it doesn't account for the individual differences. So that's the problem here. Agentic leader behaviors, what that is, it's, so these are all rooted in bias, by the way. What agentic leader behaviors is, when you think of a leader, so let me ask you, when you think of a leader, just what comes to mind right away? Uh, let, name some characteristics for me. Assertive? Was that assertive? Oh, okay. 
What was that? A good listener. A good listener. Okay. Well put together. Well put together. Confident. I like that. Confident. What else? When you think of a leader. Intelligent. Intelligent. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, so decisive, right? Visionary, good one. Compassionate, I don't always hear that one. And how about one more? Selfless, that's another one that I don't hear too often. So normally, usually, so you guys have some great ones in there. Normally when we think of a terms of a leader, most people say competitive, Confident, assertive, decisive. I hear that one a lot. Um, even aggressive sometimes can handle stress. We don't hear empathetic. We don't hear someone who's great at relationships. We don't hear someone who's great at collaborating in teamwork. So when we think in leader terms, we often think male terms. We don't think female terms. That's a type of bias that most of us hold. And so we need to challenge our thinking around what a leader is, especially today, given the diversity and inclusion, we're becoming more diverse every day as a global society. Our image and vision of what a leader is has changed. Gender culture. Actually, this is the more I talk about this turning into one of my favorite subjects because it's fascinating. It's fascinating to sit back and watch how this all plays out. And we live this every day. I think this next side slide just sums up gender perfectly. <laughs> now for those over here who can't see the slide, the mission is to go to Gap and buy a pair of pants. As you can see, the male is the blue line, the female is the red line. In six minutes, $33 later, man has his pants. Mission accomplished. The woman meanders around the entire mall, stopping at most of the stores. Three and a half hours later, over $800, she has the same pants. So this is just a whimsical look at gender differences. Let's take a more serious look at how this shows up in the workplace. Men and women are raised in different cultures. That culture starts at birth, and we carry that into the workplace as adults. This is not about rights and wrongs. It's simply about differences. As far as lifestyle strategies, have an honest dialogue with your employer about your needs, your work-life balance needs. So today's organizations, with the influx of millennials and Generation Z behind them, our HR departments are scrambling to keep up and meet the needs of these new generations. This is very good news for all of us, especially for women. So millennials value work-life balance more than older generations had in the past. They also are demanding flexibility, part-time assignments, work-from-home assignments. So if you have these needs, don't be afraid to share those with your employer because employers are listening now. Have an honest dialogue with your spouse or partner about breadwinner and caregiver issues. Again, that's a critical decision and a critical discussion that should be had. And finally, role modeling equity at home is the last suggestion here. Uh, there's interest, really interesting data behind this one is that daughters, when daughters see dad helping out around the house, doing the dishes, doing the laundry perhaps, those daughters tend to go into occupations that are less stereotypically female. There's actually robust data behind that. So when kids, your kids are watching, when kids see parity at home, that gets reflected in their career choices. So that's powerful. Okay, men. We have a large percentage of men in the room. What, maybe 75 men in the room? Okay, I'm gonna speak specifically to you here. We need your help. We are not gonna get anywhere close to gender parity without men on board. Actually, we will not achieve it. We will not achieve it without your help. We need men to actively hire women, mentor, sponsor women, coach women, support women, include women, develop women, listen to, and promote women actively. We also need men to commit to changing the leadership ratios. 
we would ask that men commit to diversity and inclusion. 